have a four case over one. This is a pretty important one in my opinion. This is Mac versus Ohio, 1961. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna go right into it. Um, this is um, a case about the Fourth Amendment, particularly it's gonna be about the uh, ex exclusionary rule and uh, the Fourth Amendment's uh, warrants. I don't know what the clause is called, just warrant clause, I don't know. Uh, so Dollary Mac was essentially uh, approached because she was uh, a but potentially um, aiding and abetting a, uh, a, 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 a accused uh, terrorist, essentially kind of a, not a great person, um, but she was accused of aiding and abetting this person. So uh, the police went to Dollary Mac, asked, yo, can I enter your house, look for this person? She was like, no, get a warrant. Um, so they came back like 20 minutes later, here's our warrant. And it's like a bunch of like scribbles. It's not a real warrant. Um, and they come in and they take a bunch of uh, stuff and they look around uh, and they don't find him, the person they're looking for, but they do find a bunch of obscene material, porn basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, after admitting uh, that the search was in fact illegal, the police departments decided to use the, ev the, uh, the evidence of obscene material anyways, which at the time, uh, owning any sort of obscene material that, you know, such as she had, was considered a crime uh, in the state of Ohio, at least. So uh, they took her to court over it, um, and she lost in the district court and in the, or no, the trial court and then the Supreme Court of Ohio. So she went all the way to the Supreme Court with the question of were the confiscated materials protected by the seizure clause of the Fourth Amendment, um, search and seizure clause of the Fourth Amendment. Uh, argued on March 29th, 1961, uh, in a 6-3 decision, the court ruled in favor of Dollary Mac. Justice Tom C. Clark uh, wrote in his, probably his most infamous opinion, that the, the, um, the, the searches and seizures made by the police department were in fact in violation of the Fourth Amendment and it was inadmissible in state court. The decision launched the court on the troubled course to determine how and when to apply the exclusionary rule. And this is important because uh, previously the exclusionary rule was only applied at the federal level. Um, However, it was not applied at the local or the state level. So this expanded the exclusionary rule, which the exclusionary rule just means that essentially, uh, you know, as long as as long as it was obtained illegally, it cannot be used in court. Um, so that's 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 what I gotta know. Basically, it incorporated the uh, search and seizure clause, basically, uh, but more, it, it basically created what we know today: the the um, uh, you know exclusionary rule and warrant. Most of the time. I mean, I don't know. Your house might get raided by federal feds too. I don't know. It depends on when you open your house. But this is definitely an important case when it comes to your protections and your property rights and your privacy. Um, at least I think so. Uh, and I also think it's important that, you know, if the exclusionary rule didn't exist, then there's literally no incentive to ever do anything legally. If you're a police officer and you can get something into court, even if it's obtained illegally, then why would you not do that? There's literally no incentive. Whereas... If that uh, information was obtained illegally, my understanding is that it can never be obtained legally again, basically, without like a bunch of going through a bunch of hoops. So, it's not a good idea to try to get something illegally. Therefore, the police don't do it, or at least try not to do it. They still do it, but uh, without the exclusionary rule, there's really no incentive to do anything legally. You could just do it illegally. Why would you ever get a warrant whenever it's going to go to court anyways, right? So there you go. Definitely a very very important court case, which I think is. Uh, essential to our rights uh, and our liberties, I would definitely say so. Uh, I think it's a very good opinion. Uh, there were some, uh, there, there was one concurrence by Justice Stewart who concurred that, um, uh, and then there was Justice Harlan, which basically just wrote a dissent uh, about, no, it shouldn't apply to this case. This is still whenever incorporation of action was pretty new. Um, cause that really didn't emerge to like the forties basically. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Exclusionary rule. Yay.